Greetings. This is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's teaching is entitled, Is Cremation a Sin? That is, Is Cremation a Sin? The Holy Scriptures make it clear that Israelites are supposed to bury our dead. Yet, in the lands of our captivity, many Israelites have adopted the pagan practice of cremating their deceased loved ones. In this teaching, I will answer the following questions. 1. What exactly is cremation? 2. Is cremation a sin? 3. What is the number one objection to traditional burial? And 4. What is a better alternative to cremation and traditional burial? Question 1. What exactly is cremation? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines the word cremation as the process of reducing a dead body to mostly tiny bits of bone resembling ash that involves exposing the body to flame and intense heat followed by pulverization of bone fragments. In other words, cremation is a practice of burning a dead body then crushing the bones to a fine powder that resembles ashes. Here are some stats about cremation. Countries all across the world cremate bodies. In Great Britain, 75% of people get cremated. In Switzerland, it's 85%. And in Japan, that number is almost 100%. Two years ago, for the first time in this country's history, more Americans were cremated than buried, and then pretty soon we're going to hit 50% of Americans being cremated. The scriptures that speak of burning people to death are not examples of cremation. Similarly, the scriptures that speak of burning dead bodies but not grinding the bones to fine powder that resembles ashes are not examples of cremation. Cremation requires a pulverization of bone fragments to a fine powder that resembles ashes. This means that despite the lies of many Christian pagans, I mean pastors, King Saul and Jonathan were not cremated. Their bones were not ground to a fine powder that resembles ashes. Let's read about this in 1 Kings chapter 31 verses 11 to 13. 1 Kings chapter 31 in the Brenton Septuagint translation is 1 Samuel chapter 31 in the KJV. So I will be reading 1 Kings chapter 31 verses 11 to 13 in the Brenton Septuagint translation. And it reads thus, And the inhabitants of Jabesh Galad hear what the Philistines did to Saul. And they rose up, even every man of might, and marched all night, and took the body of Saul and the body of Jonathan his son from the wall of Bethan, and they bring them to Jabesh and burn them there. And they take their bones and bury them in the field that is in Jabez and fast seven days. So the bones of King Saul and Jonathan were not burnt to ashes or crushed to ashes. The bones were buried whole. This means that this is not an example of cremation. Finally, when King Josiah burned the bones of idolaters on the altar, it desecrated the altar, but it is not 
an example of cremation, again, because the bones were not ground to a fine powder that resembles ashes. But don't take my word for it. Listen to this admission from a well-known Christian ministry. There are occurrences in the Old Testament of people being burned to death. 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 18, and of human bones being burned. 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 16 through 20. But these are not examples of cremation. Another thing to note is that lawless Christians try to use Genesis chapter 3, verse 19 to justify the pagan practice of cremation. They claim that they are helping the bodies of their deceased loved ones to return to the earth more quickly by burning them and grinding their bones to ashes. Just listen to this lawless Christian. The Bible says this, By the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust and to dust you will return. So the concept here of cremation is this idea that, hey, God used dirt or dust to create our bodies. And so basically, whenever you go through cremation, you're essentially returning your body back to the original state in which God had used to create mankind. The Most High does not need anyone's help to convert dead bodies to earth. But this is the kind of nonsense we can expect from Christian pagans. Consider this. The Most High never commanded anyone to cremate the dead, but he explicitly commanded our forefathers to bury the dead in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 22 to 23. Furthermore, we should bury the dead as soon as as possible. No need for expensive embalming to preserve the dead body for an open casket funeral. We would be wise to do what the Most High commanded and to reject pagan practices such as cremation. Question number two. Is cremation a sin? Amos chapter 2 verse 1. Amos chapter 2 verse 1 says this, Thus saith the Most High, For three sins, sins, sins of Moab, and for four, I will not turn away from it. Because, so this is the sin, the major sin, sin of Moab for which the Most High will not turn away from punishing Moab. It says, because they burnt the bones of the king of Idumea to lime. Lime is a powdery substance like ashes. They cremated the bones of the king of Idumia, and the Most High said that that is a sin. And for those Hebrew Israelites that are wondering why the Most High cared about the king of Idumia, also known as Edom, so that's the king of the Edomites, please listen to my teaching entitled, Who are the children of Esau today? That is, who are the children of Esau today? Amos chapter 2 verse 1 is a clear example of cremation in the Holy Scriptures. The bones of the king of Idumea were burnt to a fine white powder that resembles ashes or lime. The Most High said that it is a sin to burn someone's bones to ashes or lime. This means that cremation is a sin 
and those who have done so in ignorance must repent. Psalm 144 in the Brenton Septuagint translation is Psalm 145 in the KJV. I'm going to read Psalm 144 verse 8 and verses 17 to 20. That's Psalm 144 verse 8 and verses 17 to 20 in the Septuagint. It reads thus, The Most High is compassionate and merciful, long-suffering and abundant in mercy. So if you have committed the sin of cremation, the Most High is willing to forgive you. He is compassionate. He will understand that you did not know any better. He is merciful, long-suffering, abundant in mercy. Verse 17. The Most High is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. This means that when the Most High punished Moab for the sin of cremation, it was a righteous thing to do. Verse 18, the Most High is near to all that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. As long as you are genuine, when you call upon him, as long as your repentance is sincere, he will answer you. He will perform the desire of them that fear him, and he will hear their supplication and save them. A supplication is a prayer. If you genuinely repent of the sin of cremation, and you call out to the Most High, He will hear your supplication. He will hear your prayer. And He will forgive you for committing the sin of cremation. Verse 20. The Most High preserves all that love Him, but all sinners He will utterly destroy. Sinners are people who practice willful sin. This includes lawless Christian pagans. The reason why the oppressor is promoting cremation so strongly in these last days is because he knows that cremation is a sin and he wants as many people as possible to be guilty of the sin that makes the Most High so angry that he destroyed Moab. Do not fall for this diabolical deception. Question number three. What is the number one objection to traditional burial? Cost is the number one objection to traditional burial. The oppressor has made traditional burial extremely expensive in order to drive the masses towards cremation. Most people can no longer afford the cost of traditional burial, so they feel that they have no choice but to cremate their deceased loved ones. Listen to this. The average cost of modern burial runs on average from ten to twelve thousand dollars. Although you can talk to families who'll tell you they paid a lot more than that. In many cases, a lot more. That's ten to twelve thousand dollars or more for a traditional burial. Now let's hear what they have to say about the cost of cremation. For one thing, it's a lot cheaper. A typical cremation costs around $1,400 compared to the ten dollars to $12,000 price tag we mentioned earlier. And this is by design. 
Do not allow the oppressor to lead you into sin. Cremation is sin. Question number four. What is a better alternative to cremation and traditional burial? In the New World Encyclopedia, under the heading Burial and subheading Natural Burial, it says this. A growing trend in modern burial is the concept of natural burial. Popularized in the United Kingdom in the late 1990s, natural burial is being adopted in the United States as a method for protecting and restoring the natural environment. With a natural burial, the body is returned to nature in a biodegradable coffin or shroud. This means that there is no need for expensive caskets, intrusive embalming, or all the other costly extras that threaten to cripple us financially when we want to bury our loved ones. Invest in your own cemetery plot now, because inflation will inevitably make dying a financial impossibility in the future. How much are we talking? All in. Well, if you've got $20,000 laying around, that's a good start. Let's learn more about natural burial. The simplest option might be natural burial. A number of natural cemeteries have sprung up across the country where unembalmed bodies are buried in biodegradable containers, or sometimes nothing at all, and allowed to decompose naturally. It's inexpensive, natural, and can actually help preserve and restore vulnerable land and wildlife. Not to mention, it's how humans have done it for most of recorded history. This is how burial was done for most of recorded history. Yet nowadays, most people are either struggling to pay the exorbitant cost of traditional burial or they are being forced to commit the sin of cremation. Such a shame. Rather than leaving your loved ones to choose between going into debt to give you a traditional burial or committing the sin of cremation, why not make arrangements for your own natural burial? Pre-planning your funeral is one of the most loving things you can do for your family. Write down exactly what you want and what you don't want to happen to your corpse, which is your dead body, or at your funeral. Be very specific. If you have family members that do not serve the Most High only, then your wishes may not be respected when you pass away unless you pay for these things in advance and you have everything in writing. This is because your family may not have the funds to give you a traditional burial and they may not want to take the necessary steps to arrange a natural burial. This will leave them with the cheaper and easier option of cremation. Sin. So I urge you to contact your local funeral planner and ask them to help you to plan a natural burial well in advance. This is one way to ensure that you can rest in peace. Let's read Genesis chapter 49 verses 28 to 33. Genesis chapter 49 verses 28 to 33 reads thus. All these are the twelve sons of Jacob, and their father spoke these words to them, and he blessed them. He blessed each of them according to his blessing. And he said to them, I am added to my people. That means he's dying. Ye shall bury me. Bury me. He didn't say ye shall cremate 
me. He didn't say, ye shall dispose of my body however you see fit. He was specific. The Most High commanded that we bury our dead. And this is exactly what our righteous forefather Jacob wanted. He said to his son, ye shall bury me with my fathers in the cave which is in the field of Ephron the Chetite, in the double cave which is opposite Mambre, in the land of Canaan, the cave which Abraham bought of Ephron the Chetite for a possession of a sepulchre. So Abraham prepared this cave so that his family could be buried in it. In the same way, we can make preparation for when we die so that we can be buried according to our wishes as the Most High commanded rather than being cremated like lawless pagans. Verse 31. There they buried, not cremated, Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried, not cremated, Isaac and Rebekah his wife. There they buried, not cremated, Leah. Pagans have always been cremating. Our forefathers chose to be buried because they were not pagans and neither are we. Cremation was practiced in biblical times, but it was not commonly practiced by Israelites. In the cultures of Bible times, burial in a tomb, cave, or in the ground was the common way to dispose of a human body. Verse 32. In the portion of the field and of the cave that was in it, purchased of the sons of Chet, and Jacob ceased giving charges to his sons, and having lifted up his feet on the bed, he died and was gathered to his people. His dying wish was to be buried just like his righteous forefathers before him. This example was set for us so that we would not sin against the Most High by choosing to be cremated like lawless pagans. In conclusion, cremation is a sin and it must be rejected by righteous Israelites. Do not allow the oppressor to lead you into sin. Be sure to pre-plan your funeral so that you can have an honorable burial like our righteous forefathers, rather than being cremated like a lawless pagan. And with that I say, Salam.